Let me set the scene. You're a middle-aged Greek dude, chilling on some steps, drinking wine and eating grapes. You're sitting with some similarly old mates of yours, debating forms of government, as you do. You're all rich, you're all male, and you're all aristocrats. Then out of nowhere, one of them pops the idea of rule of the people, democracy. I mean, that's probably not exactly how it went back in Athens, given that it took a few hundred years for any recognisable form of democratic government to form, but it definitely did involve wine and Greek blokes. Democracy is a word that gets thrown around a lot. You'll probably know that New Zealand is a democracy, but are we the same as Australia or England or ancient Greece? Well, not exactly. There are different types of democracy and each have their pros and cons. So all forms of democracy are about empowering the people. The word demos literally comes from the Athenian word for a political group of people and krasi from the Greek word for power. Classical democracies were all about protecting equality before the law, justice, tolerance, and a citizen's right to be part of government decisions. Not all people from Athens were citizens though. Only men that weren't slaves and that had been born in Athens to Athenian parents were counted as citizens. So they were the only ones that could vote. New Zealand was pretty similar in the beginning. Only Pākehā men who owned a certain amount of land could vote in the first elections. Then it changed to allow Māori men to vote as well. Then it led to let Pākehā men vote no matter how much land they owned. And finally it allowed women to vote as well. So even though New Zealand has always been a democracy, it wasn't always the same as it is now. Since the 1890s, New Zealand could be called a liberal representative democracy. New Zealand is representative because Parliament is made up of elected representatives. These officials are expected to promote the interests of their voters. We won't go into any details though, but you can check it out in our video on MMP if you're interested. New Zealand is also liberal. This is where it gets a bit more grey. Five of the six parties in Parliament at the moment call themselves Liberal, but they definitely don't always agree with each other. So what does Liberal mean? Well, in a general sense, it means that the government should protect the rights and freedoms of New Zealanders, and that the government shouldn't force people to do what they don't want to. These two ideas can sometimes contradict each other, and that's usually where political parties disagree. We said that there are other types of democracy though, so what are the other options? A type of democracy that some people think is better is called direct democracy. In New Zealand and most other democracies, we elect representatives to make decisions for us, which is why we are a representative democracy. Some people argue that this means people's interests aren't always considered by politicians, and so the government doesn't always make the best decisions. These people sometimes advocate for direct democracy. This means that every individual is able to vote on everyday decisions like lawmaking. And this would mean that every decision is decided based on everyone's views. So instead of having a government, imagine having to vote on every decision all the time. Say for example, there was an issue with school funding in Ekitahuna or something. We would all be able to vote on it instead of the government handling it. To solve some of the logistics issues, sometimes people argue that only certain people should be allowed to vote on certain issues that affect them directly. So for example, only people living in and around Ikitahuna would vote on that problem. Other times people might say that only certain people should vote in general. This is called elitist democracy. There's no single criteria that's used, but sometimes people say that only university graduates should be able to vote or only people that own a certain amount of land, or earn a certain amount of money, or of a certain race or gender. The first democracy in New Zealand was elitist because you had to own a set amount of land, be Pākehā, and be male before qualifying. This meant that only rich men could vote. Most democracies started as elitist. Even though New Zealand's current democracy still doesn't let everyone vote, the voting age at the moment is 18. Some people suggest that it should be lowered to 16 because young people deserve a say in government. They might argue that the government at the moment is elitist. Other people say that under 18s don't know enough about politics to cast an informed vote. So do you think the voting age is fair? If you don't, the representatives, MPs, should have to listen to your feedback as a New Zealander. That's one of the most important ways to participate apart from voting. So make sure to let your local MPs know what you think. There are tons of different types of democracy though, each with their own restrictions and freedoms. But these three have been super important in New Zealand history. All right, all right. But what about those places that aren't democracies? I hear you all shouting at me. Well, you're right. Not all governments are democracies. In fact, about half the world does not live in a democracy. One of the biggest rivals to democracy in the world is the dictatorship or authoritarian government. 
This is where a single person or group of people has absolute control over a country. Some of the most powerful countries in the world have been or are dictatorships. England used to be a dictatorship. There was a king or queen, a monarch, that had effectively absolute power over the country and its territories. Monarchies are necessarily the same as dictatorships. Monarchies have a royal family where power is handed down either to the eldest born son or eldest born child, depending on the system, instead of other noble families which control parts of the economy, military, and which help keep the royal family in power and a population that doesn't have power to overthrow the royalty. In an absolute monarchy, the one which is a dictatorship, the monarch can do whatever they want. They have final say over their economy, military, and the social lives of their subjects. Not all monarchs are necessarily bad to their people, but still, the people will never be able to participate in decisions that will likely affect their lives. But I bet you're still thinking, doesn't New Zealand have a queen? Well, you're right. Technically, New Zealand isn't just a liberal representative democracy. We are first and foremost a constitutional monarchy, which is governed by a liberal representative democracy. This means that, technically speaking, the Queen can still kick the government out of office and dismiss Parliament, forcing a new vote. But in practice, the Queen will only ever sign orders recommended by the Prime Minister. So. Yeah, we do still have a monarch, but you don't need to worry about Liz coming around and taking all of your money to pay for an army to fight the French. So there are two main types of monarchy. One is an absolute monarchy, such as Saudi Arabia or Brunei. And the second is a constitutional monarchy, like what New Zealand has and what some of the other Commonwealth countries have nowadays. Monarchy isn't the only form of authoritarianism though. Dictators of all sorts live across the world. We've had warlords, one-party regimes, monarchies, and every other sort of government where one person or a very small group holds the real power. Quite often, governments that started off as democracies or other forms of government can turn into authoritarian regimes because of a lack of transparency and accountability to the public. Another one of the most influential frameworks of the 20th century was communism. Communist support empowering the workers to take power away from the rich and wealthy. And communism is actually a way to play on the economy and isn't necessarily political, but in reality, they both are very closely linked. There have been lots of examples of communism in the 20th century. The biggest ever were the Soviet Union, which eventually became more authoritarian and broke apart in the late 80s and early 90s, and China, which is currently the second biggest economy in the world, though China has moved away from pure communism in the last 20 years or so. Let's look at a different example though. We'll use Cuba. Cuba went through a bit of a rough patch there for a while. They were colonized by Spain and then by the USA. Then they had a military coup which didn't go exactly to plan, but it did set up the communist regime. And then they were used as a bit of a pawn in the Cold War. So how has communism worked for them? Has it worked for them? Well, that depends on how you measure success. Cuba ranks second in the world for adult literacy rate, and it does really well compared to other similar countries in terms of healthcare and education. On the other hand, the emphasis on well-being has let their economy suffer, so they aren't doing well there. For a long time, Cuba also had issues with political freedom, where people who spoke out against the government weren't ever seen again, if you get what I mean. But that wasn't to do with their communism, though. A lot of democracies, America and others, have been denounced for their human rights abuses as well. Even New Zealand has, for its disproportionate incarceration rates of Māori. Communist regimes often involve most of the power being held by the government. Every decision about money, the economy, where people live, what people do for jobs, what you learn in school, and more, are decided by the government. The government is expected to guide and look after society. We find the difference between communism and liberalism is so important that we've made a specific video comparing the two. So you can look at how that plays out in a bit more detail there. So let's quickly recap what we've done today. First, we looked at where democracy started and why New Zealand is called a democracy. We then learnt about three types of democracy, the elitist, liberal representative, and direct democracies. And finally, we took a look at some of the alternatives like monarchies, authoritarianism, and communism. In the next video, we'll take a look at MMP and how New Zealand's parliament works.